This team we're getting ready to face is very much uh, like we are in that sense, I would say. We're both jockeying for playoff positions here. This is, you know, this is a heavyweight fight, you know. This one is a big one because uh, they're fighting for a playoff spot. Every game from here on out is, is a playoff type type game. It's going to have playoff ramifications and we're going to get everyone's absolute best shot. With the Lions sitting at 6-7, and seven, we got a week 15 matchup heading up to the Meadowlands to square off against the 7-6 and six Jets. I know I say this every week, fellas, but it's a must-win game, another big game. All games are must-win games and big games at this point right now. And boy, it really does feel weird to be playing meaningful games in December for the first time in, honestly, my entire life. It's an awesome sensation, but man, it really is nerve-wracking. So we're going to dive into our second trip out to the Meadowlands and how the Lions can come away with a big win on the road against the upstart Jets. Let's get into it. All right, guys, before we get too far down the line, go ahead and do me a favor. Go ahead and click like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the kind of content that I make. And if you really don't want to miss out on anything and really want to be part of the Hat and Beard Gang, go ahead and ring the bell so that you never miss out on any notifications. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the fun stuff, fellas. Looking at it on the surface, the Jets are a very interesting team. You guys know I've been kind of salty towards the Jets because of the success that Robert Sal has had over the past couple years. I've made it very, very, very well clear on this channel that I really had wanted Robert Sal to be the hire in Detroit because Dan Campbell was relatively unknown. I have since completely reversed my opinion on that, and I am very glad that we hired Dan Campbell. Robert Sala still seems like a really cool cat, but you know, you're the enemy this week, brother. I can't root for you. I gotta put all my faith in my Lions. The Jets are a super interesting team, though. They're young, they're hungry, they face a lot of adversity. If you look at it, they're very similar to us. They just operate in a larger media market, so they get a lot more publicity than the Lions do. They're young, though. They've, they've made a lot of changes. They're building through the draft, just like the Lions are doing. They're very, very, very mirror image images of us they like to establish the run game Brees Hall was lighting it up before he got injured and James Robinson is doing just a substantially decent job in replacement of him they're doing a little bit more of RBC than say just Brees Hall carrying the entire load but they've got young talented wide receivers they've got young talented running backs their defense is young and electric obviously sauce Gardner is slowly running away with the defensive rookie of the year and this will be a fun matchup it will be interesting to see the matchup though the stats between Hutch and sauce Gardner as both of these players are vying that defensive rookie of the year title and both of them have a solid claim to it Hutch is gonna have to produce more sacks sauce Gardner is gonna have to increase his interceptions however for interceptions to come his way the ball has to come his way and nobody's throwing sauce Gardner the ball because he's basically Revis Island 2.0 it'll be a fun game it's gonna be a very very physical game fellas I don't expect a lot of points to be scored in this game I'm expecting uh, like if you are really into watching trench warfare in the in football and you really like watching a slog it out physical game expect that to happen in the Meadowlands because it's outside it's not going to be the nice dome environment that we're used to and it's December now let's talk about how the Lions can go into the Meadowlands and get this big road winning to keep our playoff hopes alive defensively fellas it's pretty simple keep doing what you've been doing the last six weeks our defense has been just absolutely rocking and rolling man we've gone from being the dumpster fire of the NFL a historically bad defense to really right in the ship and becoming a top 10 potentially top eight defense in the league if you look at our sacks takeaways even our even our points scored against we're, we're ascending we're becoming a much better team than we were at the beginning of the year and you gotta love to see that out of the growth out of the players out of the coaches but mike white brings a whole nother level to the game a better understanding of the game he, players know real recognize real man and the players realize that zach wilson ain't it and that mike white is it so he's got the players behind them they the jets have faced locker room adversity this year guys they had the quarterback controversy it just recently not even midway through the season but they had to make the change to mike white and it's been successful and he's been lighting it up and can our defense continue to be this hyper aggressive defense because for us to win we're going to have to play smart sound fundamental football but we're going to have to create a couple turnovers mike white doesn't necessarily make bad decisions per se even though he is young those those bad plays can be forced and they can be forced by creating a lot of pressure okay we've been able to get a lot of pressure on quarterbacks the past few weeks been able to get right in everyone's faces and get a lot of sacks it's been great it's been glorious and when you do that i've been saying it all year when you get in the quarterback's face you create 
turnovers. You make them pay, make ill-advised passes. You make them throw into double coverage. You let our ball hawking safeties, you know, Kirby Joseph, come in and snag balls out of time. You you leave wide receivers wide open for big hits from Deshaun Elliott. You know, and I'm really hoping, I really, really, really hope that Jeff Brokuda has a nice little bounce back game from his subpar performance against the Vikings. And of course, guys, we're going to have to stop the run. We've been able to do it the past six weeks. We're going to have to continue this trend because playoff teams, teams with playoff aspirations, let alone Super Bowl aspirations, play strong defense, they limit the running game, and they pound the rock, dude. This is what good teams do. This is what playoff teams do. We're starting to look like that, fellas. So hopefully our defense can hold it. And look, guys, if, if our defense can hold the Jets to under 20 points, I mean, we're, we're walking down... We're walking down easy street at that point, right? Offensively, tell me if you've heard this one before. Go ahead and drop a comment down below if you've heard me say this before. You got to play smart, sound, fundamental football, man. You can't turn the ball over. You can't have stupid penalties. We've been very, very good at that all season offensively. The Jets run what's called a wide nine defense, okay? So they were, they line up wide, uh, a wide front that allows their defensive ends to collapse the pocket and create pressure kind of like what i was saying with our defense where they create pressure and make quarterbacks pay, throw ill-advised passes the lions offense is a little bit more run first to set up the play action because jared goff isn't as mobile as say a josh allen but he is a much better play action quarterback than most quarterbacks in the league so how do you take advantage of the wide nine front look guys it's very simple you take advantage of the wide nine front by pounding the rock up the middle okay look i'm not expecting jared goff to be doing jared goff things i know he's been the hot quarterback the past few weeks and i love it i love the statistical anomaly that jared goff has just been like dumping on people left and right all season long especially when he plays at home but we're not at home we're outside so we're playing outside and we're playing against a wide nine defense that's gonna mean run the ball i want to see four touchdowns between our running backs and i don't mean just the two i mean get justin jackson involved he had that nice little touchdown scamper last week go ahead and reward him with a few more touches jay willie leads the nfl in touchdown rushing touchdowns with 14 even after not scoring one last week jay willie i think is going to have a big big game he's going to play a very important role and i'm, I'm pretty sure that big pp ben johnson's already figured this out but look i'm expecting to see a lot of swift a lot of jay willie i don't want to see jared goff dropping back more than 25 times if jared goff's dropping back more than 25 times that means that we're playing from behind. That means that our defense failed, okay? That means that our defense has let up more than 20 points, and we're in chase mode. Although our offense can put up the points, what we have found this year is that when we are in chase mode, our defense is already gassed, and we, they can't stop it. So even when we're chasing, we won't get that opportunity to overtake the lead again. It also should be noted that it's trending like Quinton Williams will not be playing. I'm, I am I can't say he was a DNP last, week, last practice. I don't know if he's practicing today or Friday. It'll probably come down to a game time decision. But if Quentin Williams doesn't play, expect Jay Willie to just be just pounding, pounding, pounding. Because Quentin Williams is probably a top 10, top 5 tackle in this league. He's very, very good at the defensive tackle position. If he's out, that opens up a huge boon for us. The other thing that we need to worry, really realize, and I know I'm not telling anybody that doesn't know this, Goff is gonna, Goff and Ben Johnson are gonna have to figure out how to throw away from Sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner is very, very good. You heard me praise him in the opening. However, Sauce Gardner is one man, and we have two young dynamic wide receivers and five wide receivers that can all play if you really look at it shark raymond and reynolds are all having career years we all know asb is the man so i'm expecting sauce gardner to probably line up on asb and shadow him the majority of the game well guess what in case you missed it last week jameson williams is a thing so how are you going to stop all of our targets and all of our toys Goff should probably finish the game if he throws for 25 passes, 21 to 25. If he throws for 20 passes, 16 to 20, 18 to 20, maybe 200 yards. I'm not expecting him to have to go yard, man. I'm expecting him to make nice, smart, sound, fundamental decisions and pound the rock. The running game has to be legit. Pound the rock, break up that wide nine defense, throw away from Sauce Gardner, and hold on to the rock, guys. Just sit on that ball. Just sit on the ball. We have seen all season long that when our offense sits on the ball and our defense can have a break and take a blow they are much more successful with and executing aaron glenn's game plan this is going to be a massively physical game we have a top three offensive line the jets have a top five top ten defensive line they are physical they are a lot like us it's going to be a bruiser of a game Taylor Decker's playing at an all-pro level this year, you guys. In four of the last five games, Taylor Decker hasn't let up any pressures on the quarterback. Penny Sewell's a future Hall of Famer. 
Frank Ragnow is the heart of this offensive line. The offensive line embodies Frank Ragnow's work ethic. We can take these cats to the woodshed, man. We can take them to the woodshed. Just beat the brakes off the Jets with our big bully offensive line, as long as everybody can stay healthy. So what we're really hoping for is that, that man, that Meadowlands turf, man, if we can get out of this game without too many injuries, no blown out knees, man, from that Meadowlands turf, I will be very, 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 very happy and very grateful. In the overview, fellas, it's going to be a physical game. It's going to be a bruiser of a game. It's going to be a lot of big hits. You're going to see tempers probably start flying wild. I'll, you know, expect to see a few stupid penalties out of both teams in retaliation because both teams are young, aggressive, and hungry. I don't know how else to really explain that to you other than it's going to be a volatile game. But as long as we continue our playing smart, playing good fundamental football, sitting on the rock, if we can keep the Jets under 20 points and we can score 21 to 24, look, there's no reason why we can't go to the Meadowlands and come away with a second big win in the in the Meadowlands this season, all right? It's pretty simple, fellas. If we go in and we play smart, sound, fundamental football, if we can create turnovers, put a lot of pressure in Mike White's face, and limit the running game, our offense... Ben Johnson, I'm not worried about it. He'll be able to put points upon the Jets' defense, whether it's breaking the backs or if, or, or if he actually decides to air it out and pick on Sauce Gardner. I don't know if he's going to do that. I wouldn't recommend doing it. I think we should go with a physical route and play ball control offense. But I got the Lions winning this game. Big surprise. I got the Lions winning this game. 21-17. Lions are going to hold them to under 20 points, and our defense will continue to roll. Jay Willie gets two touchdowns. I expect the Lions to win this game. Again, I've been kind of i am next week as our big trap game because i don't i'm worried that if we beat the jets and we continue to be the toast of the town and the media darlings of the, of the national media circuit we might get a big head and the bears could be a trap game so i'm a little hesitant about that but let's not worry about the bears game until we until week 16 so let's talk let's 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 keep our hopes up guys Let, let's positive energy man remember what i said jared goff feeds off our positive energy so we need to send jared goff lots of positive energy man because jared goff is the man right now making our offense tick and ex, being able to be an extension of ben johnson on the field so Go Lions, fellas. Have a good weekend. We'll catch you guys in the review video. Thanks for all your support recently. We've been seeing some nice growth on this channel. If you made it this far, I really, really appreciate it, you guys. It's 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 awesome. So uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Have a good weekend. Peace. Time to 23 skidoo. Or should I say 69 skidoo.